natural? Is that what this? I you live in Nashville, right? or is it? Uh, just outside of Nashville, yeah. Like in Franklin, is that where it is? Uh, no, it's. Uh, I live on the poor people's side of Nashville. <laughs> Which is what? Bellsburg. You're right. I'm, I don't. That's I don't know it. Okay. Pretty poor. Now we would. Uh, some of us would know you from. Uh, your current song on the radio, Verge of a Miracle. Some people would know you from having written songs for Amy Grant and uh, Debbie Boone and trying to think of who else, Benny Hester, various other people. Uh -huh. Would you start by doing uh, Verge of a Miracle for us? Sure. Because this is a song that they're playing of yours on the radio, which means a lot to a lot of us around here. Okay. So this is Rich Mullins doing Verge of a Miracle. <coughs> It's a really beautiful song, Rich. Well, thank I really you. Like that. Is there a story behind that? You didn't just write that and yeah, I, uh, yeah. We got into the studio and started the album, and, and I didn't have uh, enough songs really, and so I started writing this one, and I got uh, this far. And I knew what I was going to do, um, but um, I couldn't come up with any lyrics, and. I was really worried about writing a, you know, a really good song because they wanted me to have something that they could play on the radio. <laughs> so I was, you know, working real hard to come up with that and uh, couldn't. So um, I went to a retreat with a church and talked to a kid there who had attempted to commit suicide. This is after I worked on this for over a month. And uh, after I talked to him, I knew exactly what the song was about and um, it was very easy at, at that point. 
Um, how do you go about writing a song? Do you get a, uh, I mean, do you get a, uh, like that? No? Yeah, I any, uh, bang at the piano <laughs> until you accidentally come across something that sounds good. So you, you go from like the music first to the words? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I normally start with the accompaniment. You know, I just play until I hit something that sounds nice, and then I just repeat it over and over, which makes it, you know, like kind of pop-like music. Well, then when, uh, when somebody else records your songs, does the accompaniment ever get lost? Does it just become yeah. a song? Yeah. Are there any songs that we would know that you've done that you can't stand? Well, I probably want to put you on the spot like that. Let's, let's <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I like everything I ever wrote. <laughs> no, I meant that other people did. You can't stand the way they did it, you know? That, you know. Um, well, I think sometimes I... I more tend to appreciate people who don't synth it out. The too much synthesizer just kills it, I think. You told me you don't like techno pop at all. I hate techno pop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, why don't we go to a song that, that you did for Amy Grant? Okay. Uh, before we do that, um, there you are. You're a songwriter. How in the world did you get Amy Grant to do? I, the first one you said was Sing Your Praise to the Lord. Is that the uh -huh. song? The first one right. you did. How in the world did you come up? Uh, did you say? Did you walk up to Amy Grant and say? Hi, here's a song for you. How did that happen? No, I, um, I was working in a retreat ministry at the time, and part of the retreat ministry, you know, there's a group of us that sang during the retreats, and we provided the entertainment. And um, so we made a custom album just to sell to people on the retreats to help support the, the ministry. And Sing Your Praise was the first song on the album. And uh, <clears throat> a, f uh, a girl went to uh, some kind of conference in Nashville, and she stayed with a a girl who goes to Belmont who knew someone who knew someone who knew someone who knew someone. And so I, I didn't even know who Amy Grant was when I was very snotty about it. <laughs> they called and, and um, I think Mike Blanton is the one. Yeah, Mike Blanton called and said that Amy Grant wanted to record and I said, well, that's wonderful, you know, fine. Um, and he asked me if it was uh, copyright and I said, oh, no, you know, I don't suppose it is. But I did write it and, you know, but you can do it. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> And then he tried to impress me with who Amy was, and it made me angry, I thought. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm not really all that impressed. I was a lot more impressed when I met her. She's yeah. very nice, did besides like being very pretty. Yes. Did, did, did you like the way that she did the song? Yeah, oh, I loved it, yeah. Was it, was it weird walking into a record store and seeing this million-seller album with uh, your song on it? Did it sell a million? It sold a lot of records, didn't it? Didn't it actually sell a million? Something like that. I don't know. I don't know how many it sold. Yeah, lots, anyway. Yeah. Well, it's fun, but I, I feel we're removed from that. I mean, what I like is writing, and I kind of like performing, although I don't like singing too much because, especially when I have a sore throat, it just hurts. It adds like a depth to your voice. Let's, let's, uh, let's do Love of Another Kind. You, you didn't write that by yourself. You wrote that with... No, with, uh, mostly with Wayne Kirkpatrick. I don't know. I don't know what he Wayne was. Kirkpatrick is the guy who wrote, you know, like, all... Lyrics on every one of Michael Smith's last album. He's quite a quite a genius writer. How did you get hooked up with him? Um, we wrote for the same publishing company for a while, and he came in one day. And well, as a matter of fact, he came in one day, and we decided to take off for Michigan that night. <laughs> it was fun, and we started writing then, and we've continued writing. We wrote a couple songs together on my last album. Okay, this is from uh, Unguarded, right? Yeah, this yeah. is the original version. The original version, version that before Amy got a hold of it. Didn't make <laughs> it to the record, but... Okay.
Now, if I recall, uh, Amy opened the Unguarded tour with that song, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Was, did you ever see that that to show? Well, yeah, because I traveled with her for the That's first three right, months. I remember of it. that. I remember yeah, that. So yeah, so I saw it every night for three <laughs> months, just about. Wow. Well, you know, it's <laughs> okay. So, so there you are. You've you've uh, suddenly Amy Grant has done one of your songs. She's done "Sing Your Praise to the Lord." Is it easier to get to get uh, in to play oh, your next yeah. songs for her? <laughs> right. Well, you know, once somebody, you know, that's the aggravating thing about people, you know, is. If uh, someone says you're okay, then everyone goes, oh, man, you know, you're great. And then if someone says, well, you're not okay, then everyone else just kind of says, you know, oh, you're weird, too. So, but it's not, I mean, you know, that's the way it is. Um, I, I asked you to do another song uh, off your album, the latest album, uh, Be With Me. Oh, Be With You. Be With You, I mean, yes. Okay. Because uh, I really like that song. It's, yeah, it's nice. me too. You, how, how did that come about? Well, I um, that was a, a, a bit of a long song to write. It um, started, I was driving through the mountains in, in East Tennessee, which I think is, you know, really about the prettiest place around. And uh, so I uh, was looking out the window and thinking how pretty everything was, and I thought how bad it would look if someone bombed it. And I thought it was a bad thing, you know, that people could do that. A strange mind, Rich. Oh, really? Well, you know, you have to think of those things and, uh, in the 20th century. And so I was really kind of mad that, and I thought, gee, it's a shame they can't build bombs that would kill people and not damage, you know, like the mountains and the trees and everything. Because people, most of us, deserve to die <laughs> at best. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, trees don't hurt anybody. They just kind of hang around. And so that's when I, you know, got real upset. And then I thought, Man, you have really sick priorities because, uh, you know, trees are going to be destroyed in the end anyway, at least what we can see of them, and um, the people are going to last forever, and so maybe it would be better not to kill anybody. Sounds good to me. Let's uh, <laughs> do the song, okay? Be
Well, thank you. You're going to do a song for us that nobody's recorded, including you. Right. This is like. Oh, you know what I should say about that song too is, is that's a, <clears throat> that last line is a rip off. <laughs> I, it's good. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah, I have to admit. I mean, it's uh, no, I really like Bruce Coburn, uh -huh. a lot, and he has a song that says something like that, and um, I forget what his lines are exactly, but I kind of stole his idea. I should I should confess that. Well, I'm glad you got it off your Father, chest. Father, hear my confession. And, and you know, television. and another thing is Justin Peters helped me write that because I couldn't finish it. It was a real drag because I wanted to write that one all by myself, but I couldn't get it finished. And so Justin and I got together one time, and, and he said, do you have anything you're working on? And I thought, oh, I don't want to play you this thing. But I thought, well, you know, I'm going to show it off a little bit. And so I started. And he went, oh, man, I know. Do this. And it worked. And I was a little disappointed, actually. <laughs> well, I'm glad the song came out of it. They're telling me you've got to go to your next one or we're not going to have time to finish the show. Oh, okay. So this is one that's never been recorded. What's the title? It's called uh, For the Hatching of a Heart. I like this. This is a beautiful song. Okay, yeah, that's a ripoff of Thomas Merton. Well, he, he's okay to rip off, okay? <laughs> Merton's a good guy to rip off, I was just going to yeah. say. Yeah, he's, he's really good. Um, got, what, about 30 seconds, something like that, before cre one minute before credit rolls. What do you do with songs that you like that nobody else, like that Blanton and Harrell or Reunion? I just or, like them. I just keep like liking them. them. Yeah. yeah. I always tell people that, too. You know, they say, how can I get someone to do my song? And I just think you should do your own songs. And you should have fun with it. If you're not having fun with it, you should do something else. 
Well, Rich, I thank you for coming by. I hope this will be a regular stop on your journeys Great. through the country and just Great. show us what's I hope so too. happening in your uh, in your life and in your in your song. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. See ya. with us and he, he brought these real strange looking uh, not you Steve uh, <laughs> real strange looking instruments um, and real strange looking uh, yeah phone. this is Steve Cudworth hi Steve talk, hi. say hello in your mic hello uh, and uh, you're rich as a accompanist uh -huh. and uh, that's not a piano rich what is that uh, this is uh, ancestor of the piano it's yeah. uh, hammered also um, it's at Appalachian or no it's uh, actually Assyrian Syrian? well Assyrian oh. and they've found it also in uh, Peking and just about everywhere else where the oh. ancient civilizations were. Amazing. Kind of like the McDonald's of the old world. <laughs> okay. Um, are you, you're going to do a song on that, and then you're going to... Uh, how's it? you want to just do it, or you want to explain what you're going to do? I have no idea what we'll do. We'll, we'll just... We'll I'll just, just sit over here and watch you okay. then, okay? This is Rich Mullins uh, doing whatever he's going to do. <laughs> Very pretty. It's very, very pretty. I, I, uh, I. That's not. Uh, you never tried to get Amy Grant to do that song, though, right? No, no. no. <laughs> okay, now. Striper, I pitched it to them. <laughs> Did they like it? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to take this guitar and and Steve's going to grab his other one because you're going to do it. Don't do right. Which isn't. But you, are you really going to do it on the dulcimer? Yeah, this is the way it was written. Really? Yeah. It sounds like a black gospel song. You wrote it on the dulcimer. Yeah, music is pretty interchangeable. Yeah. Okay, well, this is uh, It Don't Do from Rich Mullins' album. What's the name of the pictures in the but sky? It's a, whole different, it's a whole different kind of It Don't Do than... It's, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll accept <laughs> that. I'll just sit here and watch. It's, I'm just, okay. it, the show's yours. I'm not going to worry All about right. it. All right. Okay. You're on. And I'm the star. That's right. Okay. <laughs>
the gospel if you don't live the Christian life. You don't do. be offended if I say that cooked, would you? No. I mean, that, that's, I've never uh, heard uh, contemporary Christian yeah. music with a dulcimer before. <laughs> we we got to make this major choreographic change here now, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got to move positions. Ready? Uh, we should like, mm, da -da, da -da 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 -da. you're going to the piano, and Steve, you're going to move her. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, you're going to go over there. Yeah. We got it. Song for us. It yeah. Is what? This is kind of a gospely song. Okay. Because I, uh, I just, I like knowing that there's more to life than rock and roll, you know. And <laughs> what? Every now and again, Did you I, hear that, folks? I you try to first write something music. that's not rocky. Okay. The name of the song is. This is just uh, the song Steve and I are working on. It's called. <laughs> Untitled. If I stand. <laughs> stand. Okay. This is uh, Steve and Rich and If I Stand.
Beautiful, guys. Gosh, consider this a uh, permanent invitation anytime you guys want to come back. Anytime you want to, okay? Right. Both of you, either or whatever. Thanks again. We'll see you guys. See you next time. The preceding program has only been made possible through the generous gift to the ministry of TV. To meet back here. This is Rich Mullins, Steve Cudworth, Kyle Stevens, and how long have you guys been playing together? Uh, Steve and I have been playing together about 10 months, and Kyle has been playing with us about four. Four. Now, how did you guys meet each other? Well, Rich came down to Chicago, and he did some concerts, and I got to meet him there through a friend. And so you're originally from Chicago, then? Yeah. Okay. And now I live in Nashville. He said, why don't you come on down? So I did. And here we are. <laughs> and now, Kyle, I know there's an interesting story behind how you met Rich, and now you're actually playing in his band. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, um... I moved up from Michigan in seventh grade, and I went to church camp, and Rich was a youth counselor there, and we just kind of got to know each other there, because I went every year, and he was a youth counselor every year, every year I went, so it was kind of fun. So you met when you were in seventh grade at youth yeah. camp? Yeah, and I was a lot younger then, too. <laughs> well, was it, do you do a lot of camp atmospheres like that? Yeah, I like camp. camp I never got to go when I was a kid. So now I go. I'm making up for lost time. So now you're getting all your fun yeah. in. Um, getting back to Amy Grant and Sing Your Praise to the Lord, I know that you traveled with Amy for about three months. What was that like, and who sang your song <laughs> when it you did it with It was very them? scary, because uh, there were too many people, and I sang, because I think she was tired of it by then. So, and I'm even tired of it, but someone thought that someone should do it, and she had more seniority than I did. Did you ever do it together? In concert? Yeah, we did it uh, one time in Akron, Ohio, together, and that was really scary. What was so scary about it? Just too many people watching. <laughs> well, we're going to get back to these guys. We're going to go to our next video. That's Deep Camp and Lazy Jane. Deep and Lazy Jane. Rich Mullins doesn't have a video out on his own, but today, right here, live in the studio, they're going to give a taste of what's going to be on Rich's new album. Here's a song that Rich and Steve wrote together. It's called If I Stand, right here on Solid Rock. There's more that rises in the morning than the sun. And more that shines in the night than just the moon. More than just
there's this fire here that keeps me warm in a shelter that is larger than this room there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment and the music higher than the songs that i can sing stuff of earth competes for the allegiance i owe only to the giver of all good first brought me to you and if i sing let me sing for the joy that is born in me these songs and if i weep let it be as a man who is longing for his home there's more than dance Okay, now back to some videos. Normally when musicians come walking in here, they come walking in with their guitars or whatever they're gonna use to play. Well, these guys come walking in with plastic cups. And uh, I won't tell you what I asked them, but anyway, I know that this is one of Kyle's favorite songs because he's the drummer and this is a pretty percussion instrument type thing. And why don't you guys just show us what you do with these cups? Take it away. Two, three, four. It's about as useless as a screen door on a submarine. See with that work, baby. It just ain't happening now. One is your left hand, one is your right. It'll take two strong arms and two to hold on tight. You're supposed to cut off their nose just to fight their face. But I think you need so much to show. You're a legend, faithful. There's a difference, you know, between having faith and playing make believe. One will make you grow. The other one just make your sleeves talk about it. Yeah. But I really think you ought to take a leap off of the ship before you claim to walk on water. But see what that works, so like a song you can't sing. It's about as useless as a screen door on a submarine. They curse and got from every word that he breathes. He lets you take it to your heart so you can give it in some feet. It's gotta be active if it's gonna be alive. You gotta put it in. Otherwise, it's about as useless as a screen door on a submarine. See with our work, baby. It just ain't happening. One is your right hand, one is your left. It's your guide, your light, your life, and your breath. See with our work, feel like a song you can't sing. It's about as useless as a screen door on a submarine. 